What's going on, guys? It's Eric again, back with another video. As you guys can tell, I got my webcam up here with the crappy audio going on here. Just kind of bear with me through this video. I've got uh, an actual physical USB microphone coming on here, but make sure should make my audio uh, a lot, lot better. But anyway, uh, that's another video for another time. I kind of want to talk about Jim Harbaugh and Michigan extending his contract for another, uh, goodness, it looks like another four years uh, of extension on this, <clears throat> which I'm not. I can't say that I'm not pleased, but uh, I'm not disappointed here either. I think Michigan could have done worse, but I also think Michigan could have done better here too. And I'll kind of go in through the, kind of go in through here, and I'm going to do a little bit of jump cuts here because how the Detroit Free Press is kind of putting his contract out here, uh, I'm going to kind of read verbatim based on this, uh, the report on here, and I'll go ahead and put it down into the description area if you guys kind of want to read the article. Uh, there's a little blurb there about how his contract all breaks down, and I'll go through it. And that's kind of where you're going to see the jump cuts uh, come into play here. But as we all know by now, Jim Harbaugh is the, still going to be the head coach of Michigan. Uh, a lot of speculation was going to kind of come around to who was going to be the next head coach. Where was uh, Mich or was Jim Harbaugh going to uh, get fired because he had one year left on his contract, or was he going to walk away? Or what was going to happen here? I think a lot of Michigan fans kind of thought that, um, that thought that he was going to be released by Michigan, and they were going to have to do the buyout. Which uh, I don't know how much the buyout would have been, but it does put the buyout information in here with his extension in here on his contract. But uh, we all thought that Michigan was going to move on from Jim Harbaugh, and they were going to get somebody else. Uh, a couple of other names that were out there were uh, Luke Fickle from Cincinnati. You had Bob Stoops, uh, the former coach of. Oklahoma, which um, we don't even know if he even wanted to come back and coach. And also Matt Campbell from Iowa State were kind of the big names that were thrown around. But, you know, me sitting here uh, in my own home, not being a part of the Michigan program in any way, shape, or form, uh, this is like kind of all speculation and opinion on my part. We don't even know. We, and I mean we as Michigan fans or just fans of college football in general, we don't know if Michigan actually reached out to those guys to see if they even wanted to come here. Now, maybe they did, and maybe they said thanks, but no thanks. Maybe all three of them did. And Ward Manuel kind of said, well, let's kind of extend Jim's contract and kind of see where the program is for right now. So um, I, I, I kind of want to – I my opinion is I think Michigan had better options available. I don't think they – I don't think they had the resources available or didn't take advantage of the resources available to reach out to other people to say, hey, who do you want to see here uh, coming into uh, the 2021 season, which we still may have the coronavirus pandemic kind of going on here. But I, I kind of think it's a, to, at least to War Manuel's part and to the Michigan uh, people that get his contract going around here, I think they kind of thought that was their, uh, the kind of the last option, or maybe they never even reached out to any of those people. Maybe this was a big thing all going throughout uh, since the last game of the season, which was, goodness, what was it, like five, six weeks ago uh, when that happened and they had the COVID stuff going on, so they had to cancel the game. Maybe five, six, seven weeks ago, somewhere right around in there, you had that kind of lull of what, what Michigan was going to do, and they never showed their hand at all what they were going to do. So kind of keeping fans in the dark of what was – going on, which made us think that Michigan was kind of move, going to move on from Jim Harbaugh. But anyway, they sign his contract, and it kind of goes like this here. So I'm looking over here at my other screen for at, at the Detroit Free Press, which, I again, I'll put it down into the, uh, into the description part so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing now. This is all according to the, the Detroit Free Press, and the person that did this con the content was Orion saying he kind of – reports that it says here, according to the documents obtained by the free press, Jim Harbaugh will earn $4 million in total base salary during his first year of his new deal, which is roughly half of what he earned in 2020, which, okay, I can I, I can see that. I think his uh, performance, and I think was probably more or less his performance against Ohio State, uh, wasn't what Michigan had uh, thought to believe when he first came in here, but his record throughout the rest of his uh, tenure here, has been actually pretty good with the exception of 2020. And then it kind of goes on here and it says, well, his base salary is $605,000 for each year of the deal, which could take him through 2025, 
while an additional compensation starts at $3.395 million in its first year, combining for $4 million total, and it escalates to as much as three point eight two one in the final year. So it kind of sounds like to me that um, with his incentives that kind of come on with here, he could be he could be right where he was uh, before the con before his uh, extension kind of came on here. At least that's kind of how it reads to me. And then it kind of goes on to here, and there's a bunch of other stuff in here. But the kind of the big thing of it here is if you kind of go a quarter of the way down, if you guys are kind of following along, it says without the incentives, Harbaugh can earn up to four point one plus million dollars in year two. 4.2 in year three, 4.3 in year four, and 4.42 in year five. So kind of right, right around the four, four, four and a half million dollar mark, or excuse me, not four and a half million, four to four and a quarter million dollar mark right around there, uh, which I think uh, according to this is kind of like 10th in the Big Ten for uh, coaches, but he has to kind of prove himself here too. And I think that's what kind of Michigan is, uh, kind of coming off of here that get, get us some wins against Ohio State. You know, we, the Ohio State fans are got to be loving this, man. And for the fans, they're like, man, Michigan just extended Jim Harbaugh. Holy cow, man, we're just, we're going to keep winning for the next five years here, and and rightfully so because Jim hasn't, at least in Ann Arbor, hasn't had the tools or the team. It's kind of more or less a team, not the tools. The team available to to be on that level of the Ohio State program. So. A perfectly valid reason why Ohio State fans feel the way they do. Uh, kind of one, one kind of, uh, as I'm kind of reading through here, one mention of it, at least it's a link to another article, which you got to be a subscriber to get to, kind of puts, uh, kind of puts him as, <laughs> and I'll read it here to you. It says, Jim Harbaugh is Michigan football's version of John Cooper. Wow, that's uh, John Cooper. And, and kind of falls in line with that. John Cooper was a decent coach for Ohio State. He just could never really get over the hump of Michigan. Now, John Cooper actually won against Michigan, but the kind of putting that comparison together is, yeah, kind of kind of like that. And the only reason we're kind of saying this is he was kind of brought in to kind of save the program, to get the program up to a national level, and to get them to the college football playoff and hopefully play in the national championship game, which has never, he hasn't even sniffed it, not even the fruitation. And to kind of go along with that point, his kind of record has kind of dictated that. He was 10 and 3, 6 and 2 uh, for his first year. He was 10 and 3 again, but he was 7 and 2 in the Big Ten for his second year. 8 and 5, 5 and 4 in the Big Ten. Then he was 10 and 3 and 8 and 1 in his fourth year, which a lot of people don't recognize this, but they did win a share of the Big Ten East Championship, which. To me, I kind of look at that and I kind of agree with everyone else. That's Ohio State's championship. That is not our championship. But they recognize that as uh, Michigan being uh, uh, division champion. And they go ahead and they have the, I think they even have a, um, uh, the actual trophy on display it's somewhere in the Michigan athletic uh, room, somewhere in, in there, because I've seen a picture of it on uh, social media. Then he goes nine and four in uh, 2019 and six and three. And then this year, obviously with the COVID restrictions and all the stuff that kind of happened this year, they were two and four uh, for their record. And then they didn't play any non-conference games. I think the deal kind of going on here is probably right. I wouldn't have paid him that much to come back to or to extend his contract. I would have said, look, Jim, you're going to get paid this. You, you have to prove to us that you can go to Ohio state or, uh, go on to whatever other team you want to go to and have Michigan go out and get the next successor uh, for Jim Harbaugh. But that didn't that didn't happen. So going on with that, where does Michigan go from here? Now, we know that Don Brown has been um, uh, released from the program, which I, now that I'm kind of looking back on this, I think he was kind of more or less a scapegoat. Um, the Michigan kind of said, hey, Jim, you got to kind of do something here. And um, Don Brown was kind of more or less a scapegoat of the program to kind of have Jim keep his job and to hopefully come back and coach for the Wolverines again. But I know Jim was tempted to go to the NFL. Um, is Jim willing to take the, some of the reins off and let his coordinators do their job instead of, because I think kind of Jim is a little bit of a micromanager. Um, he has to have his hand in the cookie jar uh, at some points, and I don't think he needs to do that. Um the team obviously has to get better under him. I think he knows the team has to get better under him, but 
the Jim Harbaugh that I've seen on the sidelines the last two years was a lethargic, uninspired kind of coach. I kind of want to see that fire to get his players to to play, you know, kind of show some of that cockiness. It, I, I didn't really even see that. On the, and I'm just only saying on the sidelines. Maybe behind the scenes he was cocky. But to be on the field, to be give some of that cockiness, give some of that um, confidence and inspiration, like you guys can do this sort of stuff. Even though Jim may think that they don't, you got to present that to the players. Like, look, guys, you got to do this. I have confidence in you to do to make these plays. And last year, and I will go back even to the last two years, I haven't seen that from Jim Harbaugh at all. I haven't seen it. So um, I don't really know where to go from here on this. I'm kind of, I, I, I say on the fence on it, but I'm not, I'm not glad, but I'm not pissed either. I'm not to the point of being on the extremes of both of them. I'm like, okay, so he's the coach. Let's see what he does. All right. I'm kind of one of those kind of guys, kind of the setback to wait and see, is Jim really going to make the changes necessary to get the team back up to a competitive level uh, going back from uh, the 2020 year? Or was this just kind of an anomaly with the pandemic that's been going on? Uh, is he willing to let the reins go a little bit, not be such of a micromanager? At least that's the kind of how he, he, he gives off to me, like he's micromanaging. Um, is he willing to take the reins off and let his coordinators do the jobs and have him help here and there kind of where he wants to go? Like he wants to put this offense in here. Get the person with experience to do that style of offense. And the same thing with the defense. Kind of with his defense, what he wants to see in here. Get that person in here that wants to do that defense. And then you help to where they're kind of going on here. Now, I think recruiting is going to take a hit this year, obviously, with um, obviously with the record that they have. And obviously with uh, how the this coronavirus pandemic has played out through the last, goodness, we're almost up to a year now. So I'm going to say a year, up to a year now. Well, the coronavirus pandemic coming on, just I, I think we're going to probably see uh, another subpar year for Michigan football. And then I'm hoping that Jim can kind of uh, turn it around here. We all know the aspects of Michigan football, and this isn't the time or the video to kind of put that in here. But we know what Michigan football needs. And I think if Jim's the coach that he says he is, I think Michigan will kind of get right back up there to compete for uh, a division, a conference, and hopefully even a national championship. But first, we got to get to that hump of getting us to the point of competing, uh, to at least get us there um, with Ohio State. And then there's the point of competing with Ohio State. That's kind of where we're at. So, guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Was there something that I missed? Uh, what are your thoughts on it? You know, is there coordinators that you kind of want to see? Anything that you can bring to the table? Go ahead and put right down there in the comments. I'm sure there's going to be the OSU trolls to say, yay, Jim's back for the next five years. Like I said, you, you guys are are perfectly valid in that. Uh, but I kind of want to see some more constructive uh, kind of thoughts on Michigan. I kind of want to see Ohio State and Michigan actually do well and compete well because I think it gives the conference the boast that it needs. And it kind of gives us like, and I'll, the kind of thing, I like I've been a broken record, that Big Ten Conference, they're they're starting to step up their game. And we've all seen it with uh, the other teams in the conference. They're starting to step up their game, and Michigan kind of seems to be regressing here. But, guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Also, please consider hitting that subscribe button, and make sure you guys hit that bell notification so you guys get more videos just like this one. All right, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Deuces. Take care, guys.